Hi everyone and welcome to this episode. Today we're continuing our journey into chemical equilibrium and specifically chemical equilibrium problem solving. And we're going to take a look at a couple of problems that are a step up in difficulty from the ones we've seen before. And so let's get into it and we'll see how they're different. Um, I'm starting here with a repeat of a slide from a previous video where we were looking at a particular reaction and we were given an ice table with final concentrations and we were asked to find the equilibrium constant. So we just take our equilibrium conditions, put them in and tap the calculator and we ended up with a equilibrium constant of 55.6. And that was great. Nice straightforward problem. Now take a look at this next one. I'm keeping the reaction the same so that it's consistent from one to the next. And as you look at it, take a look at what is uh, different about it. It says here at a different temperature, temperature uh, equilibrium constants are temperature dependent. The K for the same reaction is now 120. So different temperature. If three moles of each reactant are placed in a two liter flask, calculate the concentrations of all components at equilibrium. So maybe you recognize this is a different kind of problem because in this problem, we already have the, the equilibrium constant value. We just don't have those final concentrations. And so we're going in reverse essentially. So let's not panic. We're gonna go ahead and uh, set up our ice table. You should be getting fairly proficient at doing these by now. I'll like to just rewrite the reaction so everything is nice and, and close by each other. We'll get a little ice table going. Now this time we're told it's three moles in a two liter flask. And the original concentration should be in molarity in moles per liter. And so three moles divided by two liters, that's actually gonna be about a one and a half moles per liter concentration. And we're told there's nothing of the product actually in there. So we'll put a zero there. Now I know it's gonna to go to the right cause we need to make some of the product. And all the coefficients on the left side are one. So we're actually, um, we're going to, we have to figure out how much it goes down in order to get the final concentrations, correct? Well, we don't know how much it's going to go down. I know it's going to go down some, but how do I deal with that? Well, just like in math class, if you don't know something and you have to solve for it, let's just call it X. You can call it whatever you want, but we'll call it X here to keep it uh, nice. Now I know it's going to go down and I know whatever that value is, is going to be X. I'm just calling it X. And then I also know over here, this is gonna go up, but each one of these produces two HIs. So this is actually gonna go up two times X. Now you might be getting scared the fact that there's X's and things in here, and it's something we gotta get used to here in equilibrium uh, land. And so our final concentrations, I don't know what X is, but I know my final concentration is gonna be 1.5 minus X. And the final concentration will be two X for the product. And now if I can just solve for X, I will be able to get my final concentrations in as this result. So try not to panic. We're just gonna go ahead and set it up. So our K value, K expression is going to be HI squared over concentration of H2 and the concentration of I2, okay? And that I'm going to actually plug in my 2x on the top squared and 1.5 minus x times 1.5 minus x. Okay, now it's getting a little ugly in terms of doing the math and I'm sorry for that. It just, it's one of the things we have to do. Um, now, when we get to this part, you might recognize the fact that we're looking probably at a quadratic equation here. And um, that may be true. That would be one way to solve it. There's actually several ways to solve this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look for a shortcut to this thing. And all of this is going to be equal to 120. And what I'm going to notice is that there's 2x squared, but there's also 1.5 minus x also essentially squared on the bottom. So let's rewrite this. 120 equals x squared over 1.5 minus x also squared. And I know I have a squared on top and bottom. So the easiest way to get rid of that is actually to just take the square root of both sides. I'll end up not doing a quadratic equation on this one because by taking the square root of both sides, I now get a situation where the square root of 120 is 10.95. And now that's just gonna be equal to X over 1.5 minus X. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. That should be a 2x. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is do my solving for whatever x is. So let's, um, we're going to bring this over to the one side and distribute it. So we'll get 16.43 minus 10.95x. And that's all going to be equal to the 2x. Um, now let's get this off to the other side. 16.43 equals 12.95x. And I get an x value of 1.27. Well, we successfully navigated this type of problem. And we now have an x value of 1.27. Now be careful that you don't just solve for x and rush off to the next problem without actually answering the question that is being asked, which is what is the concentrations of all components at equilibrium? So after this point, you should go to the side or the bottom or wherever you want to do it and actually answer the question. So we're gonna say, all right, the concentration of H2 uh, is actually equal to the concentration of I2. So I'm gonna do these together equals 1.5 minus 1.27, or that's gonna be equal to 0 0.23, sorry, 23 moles per liter, okay? Then I'm also going to answer the question for the HI. The HI concentration is now going to be 2X, which is two times 1.27, which is equal to 2.54 moles per liter. So I have now actually answered the question. I had to do a little extra work this time to solve for X, but it worked out and I can actually double check my answer if I wanted to and go back and plug in 1.27 for X here and see if I get 120. I did that and I got like 119, something like that, really close. So I know that I, I'm, I'm on the right track. Okay, our first pause the video moment is for you to try one on your own. It's a similar reaction and a similar calculation after you set it up. So here's a reaction at a different temperature. The KC is 25. If 0.4 moles are placed in a 0.5 liter container, calculate the concentration of all components at equilibrium. Take a moment and pause the video and we'll show the solution. Okay, so when I did this one, I got a solution of 0 0.36 for X. You can pause and check your work against mine. I got an X value of 0.36 using a very similar method, taking the square root of both sides and then simplifying. And I then went and answered the question. The H2 and the I2, F2 are both 0.36 and the HF is 0 0.08, which is 0.8 minus two of those. So hopefully you got that right. If not, just go back and check your work and see how it went. Let's try one more with me and then I'll have one more pause the video moment in just a little bit. So here's my question. It's a similar reaction. Uh, the KP value is 11.5 and the PCL5 has an initial pressure of 3.0. So we're going to solve this one. We're going to do an ice table. Again, we're finding the final equilibrium concentrations or pressures of all species. So we'll set up our ice table. We're told the initial pressure is 3.0 ATM zero of those. This is going to go down by X. This is going to go up by X and up by X. This is all again, all one to one ratios. So 3.0 minus X, X and X. Okay. Setting up my, my KP expression. It's always a good idea to set up your KP expression blank so that anybody reading your work will know that you know what you're doing. And if for some reason, heaven forbid, if there's an error right off the bat, they'll be able to tell you that and you'll be very clear where the error came from. So just go ahead and take an extra minute. I know it's extra, but um, it makes for, for a good solution. Set it up. Then we're going to input our values. So KP is 11.5. And I don't know what that is, but I know that it's going to be X at the end. And this is going to be 3.0 minus X. Okay, um, now I'm gonna try to simplify this. Now I can't do the square root of the top and bottom and both sides like I did last time. So I gotta do a, something slightly different. Now I'm gonna move this over to the one side and distribute it. So I get 34.5 minus 11.5 X, and that's gonna be equal to X squared. 
Um, I'm going to move these now over to the other side so we can set the whole thing equal to zero. X squared plus 11.5 X minus 34.5, and that's gonna be equal to zero. Okay, so we actually have a quadratic equation here in this example, and I apologize for that. It's just something that happens in chemistry class, and you might run across one of these. So it's helpful now to talk about how you can solve the quadratic. Hopefully you've had enough math experience that you have solved these before. Um, if not, uh, you might wanna go and get a tutorial on that. There are plenty of videos out there on, in YouTube uh, about how to solve quadratics. Uh, one way to do it, if you have a laptop and you're just doing your homework, you can go to any one of a number of quadratic equation solvers on the internet where you can simply plug in A, B, and C, those coefficients, and it'll calculate it for you. Um, if you have a graphing calculator, you can uh, also use that to solve a quadratic equation, whether it's uh, linearly or, or uh, algebraically or graphically. There's the quadratic equation, if you're comfortable using that. Um, now, I did a couple of different things. I'm going to set that right there. <clears throat> and um, I actually graphed this on my graphing calculator. And you'll see the graph come down here, and then it'll come up over here, and I've got my little cursor right there. The, the, there are two places where y equals 0, and this crosses the x-axis, and those are our two answers to this problem. Whenever you solve a quadratic, there's two roots, there's two zeros. Okay, and this actually came out to be, and you, you can see if I can scroll past it. Right there, I'm very close to the zero, and it's showing um, 2.5. Uh, the actual value that it comes out as, my two answers are x equal either a negative 13.97 or a positive 2.47. Those are the two x values at which it crosses and y is zero. So... Yeah, we got two answers. So what do we do with that? Well, we can eliminate one of the answers because it doesn't make sense. Like this one. If I'm only starting with three atmospheres and I'm supposed to be lowering it and going this way, adding a negative of a negative 13.97 makes the pressure go up and that doesn't make any sense at all. Sometimes you get values that are too big and you be like three and I can't subtract 4.5 or something. You just got to look at what makes sense. But if I start with three and subtract 2.47, that's something reasonable that I could do. And so I'm going to pick this one as my answer. So therefore PCL3, the pressure of PCL3 equals the pressure of Cl2, which is equal to 2.47 atmospheres. And the pressure of my PCL5 is going to be three minus that or 0.5 three atmospheres. So again, take a moment at the end after you've solved for X and make sure you answer the question because you did a lot of work for that and you want to make sure you get credit for everything that you have done. Okay, hopefully that didn't scare you too much. And if you're up for the challenge, I have one more for you. Our last pause the video moment. It's very similar to the one we just did, but if you want to just exercise your mind a little bit, you can try this one. Uh, take a moment, pause the video and see if you can do it. All right, again, it's very similar to the one we just did. And the answers that I got, again, I got a quadratic equation that I said equal to zero. X came out to be two different zeros, two roots, negative um, 3.6, which doesn't make sense because if I'm starting at two, um, I don't have that much available. And also it's going to go up anyway. And But I can subtract 1.828 from that. And that would be the one that I picked. So I double checked my work and it came out very closely to the 2.31. So the pressures of the products are 1.28. The pressure of the reactant is 2.0 minus that or 0.72. So if you got that one, congratulations, you're doing very well. And um, I hope you found this type of uh, video helpful. In the meantime, if you have any questions uh, that you'd like me to solve or you can send them to me in the comments or whatever. And in the meantime, Happy solving and have a great day.